there is a well-established conventional wisdom among statistical researchers that players aren't really trying to win in spring training. They're just working on their game, getting into shape, and so the numbers don't tell you anything and you should ignore them. Now it turns out that uh, actually the numbers are very noisy. There's, there's, they're messy, they're small samples, there's different quality of competition, but if you try to just isolate the little pieces of data that we know stabilize the fastest and can contain real information in that small sample, then the fact that the data is six months younger makes all the difference. So we know that walk rate stabilizes quickly, we know that strikeout rate stabilizes quickly, we know that ground ball rate stabilizes quickly. I used a sort of holistic measure of power, which is extra bases on contact. Um, the number of times that uh, a guy tries to steal, not how many times he makes it, but how many times he tries, that stabilizes fast. On the hitter side, I mean, the big one that this thing nailed was Jose Bautista in 2010, who went from being a complete nobody to hitting 50, 54 home runs. He had like 10 homers that spring training. It was real. Um, Mike Morse's breakout in 2011 was similar. And uh, on the pitching side, it gets a lot of guys. Clayton Kershaw's rookie year when he was 20. I remember Alex Cobb in 2013 had a big spring training. Um, it got Bartolo Colon's comeback. It's, it's great. If you want to know who's going to be the best, whether you're a fantasy player or you're a fan of a team, um, this is the best place to look to, to find something out that nobody else knows or nobody else is looking at. And that's, that's value for, valuable if you're a fantasy player, and it's especially valuable if you are a major league team and you're playing for real money.